You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Dead But Not Gone with host Toby Evans. Dead But Not Gone shares an aspect of the afterlife that is typically not considered, that loved ones or strangers that have died may still be here, impacting your life more than you realize. So now, please welcome the host of Dead But Not Gone, Toby Evans. Hello, everyone. I'm Toby Evans, your host, and you are listening to Dead But Not Gone, coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We know that we're living at a very unique time, going through an awakening process that is both global and very personal. The acceleration is reflected everywhere around us even in the frequency of the Earth's electromagnetic field. I kept hearing about this, so I wanted to check it out and see what I found out. And what I'm talking about is a frequency that's been known to us since 1954 as the Schumann Resonance. It's named for the German physicist, who is a professor, W.O. Schumann, who detected and then identified resonances at a main frequency of 7.83 hertz. This is the accepted frequency that has remained relatively constant for thousands of years, is what they speculate, and it's known to be the natural heartbeat rhythm of the earth. The ancient rishis, or the sages in India, have referred to this as the Om frequency. They see it as a tuning fork for life. It's more than just the phenomenon caused by lightning in the atmosphere, which that is part of it. But some see the Schumann resonance as an important electromagnetic standing wave that acts as a background frequency that's both influencing the biological oscillators and that whole alpha rhythm of our brain waves. So that standing wave of 7.83 has remained fairly constant until it began to rise in the 1980s. And in June of 2014, monitors at a Russian space observing system showed a sudden spike in activity where it went to 8.5. But since then, they've recorded days with the Schumann accelerated to 16.5 hertz, which I thought was kind of amusing because when I was reading back articles, back when it went to 8.5, they were making all these speculations of what was going to happen if it even hit 13, as if that was, you know, unheard of. And yet in late December of 2015, it spiked to more than 50 hertz. And I just saw three days ago, another posting where it had spiked again to 45. So what does this mean for us? Well, if Mother Earth is shifting her frequency, so are we. Think of it as tuning forks. And think about that whole entrainment thing that happens with tuning forks. If you've got a tuning fork that is vibrating at low C and you bring in a high C tuning fork, it's going to pull up that lower one up to the higher vibration. So that's a whole octave. And in a way, it's what's happening. We pretty much have doubled from that 7.83 all the way up to more of a steady 16 that we're doing these enormous spikes out of. So you may have noticed 
especially since 2014, that the speed at which you are waking up is impacting your sleep patterns and your relationships and your ability to regulate your immune system and your general health and your perception of time. Yes, time as we know it is speeding up. The truth is that we are in the process of initiation and that initiation is changing our outer world and it's preparing us for the changes that are occurring in the inner world of our beings, which for some of us feel pretty uncomfortable. We are playing catch up with the planet. The more resistance we have, the more issues are going to come up. You know, have you noticed that? How many of you out there are feeling more overwhelmed with life's challenges? How many of you feel like you're walking through sludge or struggling just to keep up? Well, you're not alone. If walking on a tightrope stretched between the old earth that is dying and the new earth that is being born is the new normal, then we've got to find ways to balance and calm that hyper-vigilant survival responses that are getting triggered inside of our bodies. Those responses kind of come with the territory when your reptilian brain is freaking out. So we're going to start out tonight by doing some exercises that would be really helpful for you to remember these when you're feeling most stressed and need to calm your system down. Okay, so start first of all by taking your right hand and you're going to make a three finger notch. That means that you're taking your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger, and you're placing them all together. It sort of looks like you're holding a delicate flower, or you can think of as miniature teacup. So place your fingers now in that U-shaped notch at your throat, right above the collarbone. Then you're going to lay your left hand across the left side of your head with your thumb right underneath your ear and your fingers going straight up, laying flat on your temples. Now we're going to take three to five deep, slow breaths. So just breathe while you're here while I explain what it is we're doing. We are calming the triple warmer neurovascular points. Triple warmer is both a meridian and it's a radiant circuit. It is the commander-in-chief of the body's energies, and it governs, guess what, our fight, flight, or freeze responses. So just by holding these, we're sending a calming signal to what triple warmer governs, and that is connected to the hypothalamus. So think of the signal that you're sending just by holding this. It sounds like, all is well. So breathe that in. All is well. No matter what's happening out there, no matter what my body is feeling like, all is well. Triple warmer also regulates your body temperature and your metabolism. So by holding these, we're asking triple warmer to make the adjustments needed to bring our body back into alignment and harmony with the earth. Okay, now you're going to change hands, so just switch. Put your opposite hand into that three-finger notch. Insert it into that spot in your neck, into that U-shaped notch, and lay your right hand up the side of your head so that your fingers are resting at the temples. Now breathe again in through the nose, out through the mouth. Triple Warmer governs the search and destroy activities of the immune system. We can think of it like our inner militia. It's always on guard. It's concerned with our primal survival issues, which means it really has selective memory focusing on danger and threats. And it sees things as threats that your mind might not even think, oh, that's not anything to be upset about. But your reptilian brain doesn't know that. So again, by holding these two areas, we are saying, I honor and thank my inner warrior, but I said warrior, even though that sounds like warrior, but it is our inner warrior. But right now I'm safe and sound. You can stand down. 
I choose to nurture myself with love and acceptance. My body can relax and return to its true state of wholeness. Okay, you can release your hands. And now we're going to do something called the triple warmer smoothie. I do this one a lot. Okay, rest your face first in the palm of your hands, like you did when you were a kid laying on your stomach watching TV. Okay, now notice that your fingers are resting up there on the temples. Now you're going to breathe in deeply, and as you do that, press your fingers into the sides of your head, and you're starting to smooth the skin from the temples to above your ears. So you're actually lifting your fingers up two or three inches up the side of your head. On the exhalation, you're going to circle your fingers around your ears, raking your fingers through your hair. That means if you have any hair. And you're going to press down the sides of your neck and hang your hands on the back of your shoulders. Again, saying to yourself, all is well. Now just massage your fingers into your shoulders. Stay here for two breaths. And then you're going to drag your fingers slowly over your shoulders with pressure and draw your hands down the middle of your chest, crossing them over your heart chakra. And just keep them there for a few seconds and let your breathing return to normal. Uncrossing whenever you're ready. If triple warmer acts as our inner militia when we perceive danger, like a foreign invader affecting our system, you can bet that there's a fight, flight, or freeze response that goes on internally when we have an earthbound spirit attached to our field. Calming the overreactive reptilian brain is a good thing to do even when we talk about this subject. Bob Olson, who, I've, who I have mentioned before, he's the host of Afterlife TV, and he does a great job of bringing paranormal information to the masses. Yet, ironically, Bob does not believe there is such a thing as earthbound spirits. And he gives this criticism. He says there are too many of the bereaved who are suffering in their fear that their deceased loved ones are lost or stuck between worlds. In other words, earthbound. He continues saying, To me, this is a sad and, and unfortunate tragedy, especially for the grieving, because I have not seen any evidence of this belief. Well, I don't think I will ever have empirical evidence that will satisfy the scientists or those who don't believe, but my observation in working with earthbound spirits since the mid-1990s has been that the bereaved survivors are not suffering over the fact that their loved ones may be earthbound, because for the most part, they have never given this a thought. It is not even a remote blip on their radar screen because the majority of the population is not tuned into this awareness. Instead, I've seen just the opposite. Many individuals have been suffering because their loved ones are still attached. Ironically, they receive relief from a host of symptoms as well as comfort and closure when they open to this possibility, and then they feel really empowered to assist them in crossing over. Earthbound spirits is one of those subjects that we have been programmed to ignore or dismiss as science fiction, because if it's real, then fear comes up, because we're also programmed to fear and judge and condemn what we don't understand or what we don't feel comfortable with. And if we can't control it, we're not very comfortable with it. So it's time to uncloak the program portrayal of scary ghosts as monsters and approach earthbound spirits using the higher functioning part of our brain which is going to include reasoning, and it's going to include compassion and acceptance and an openness and willingness to help. 
we know that the way to release fear is to face it. Otherwise, it's used against us to disempower us. So facing it in this context means getting informed. And that's what this show is about tonight. I'm going to inform you a lot more about earthbound spirits. First, we're going to take this break. So stay with me to hear all about this information, especially you who are dealing or suspect you're dealing with earthbound spirits. You are listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Toby Evans. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. And we're back. You are listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Toby Evans. And if you feel like visiting my website, you can find me at sagebrushexchange.com. My email address is toby at sagebrushexchange.com. I'd love to hear from you. So back to our earthbound spirits and filling this in more. Earthbound spirits are human spirits that just never made it to the world of light. Even though they're no longer restricted by a physical body, they remain connected to the lower matrix. And I'm saying it that way on purpose. Yes, they're connected to the 3D plane and the or in between what we think of the lower astral, but they're connected to the lower matrix that's part of the 3D control system here. And that is the same one that controls all of us when we buy into the program of fear and separation or resistance. So think about earthbound spirits. A lot of them are really in that resistant mode of whatever is behind that, whether it's from their own fear of going forward or their own desire to stay here. There's resistance happening, and it keeps them into that lower matrix. So I'm going to give you some symptoms to look for because it's good for all of us to be aware of, you know, to say, do I have an earthbound spirit attached to me? So I'm going to share the ones that have been reported to me from clients who had no idea that they were dealing with an earthbound entity when they first came to me. And I'm also sharing them from my own experience because I, like many of you, even though I am aware of them, many times I've been in denial going, nah, that can't be an earthbound spirit. I keep brushing it off until I have to look at that possibility. So the most common one that everybody reports 
is feeling fatigued, tired, exhausted, and that is even when you're getting enough sleep. So I realize that that symptom fits most of the population because it's also what we're all experiencing trying to balance ourselves in the higher frequencies as they're coming in. But if it's connected to an earthbound spirit, you're going to feel what I'll call an energy drain. Okay, and an energy drain, it's easiest for us to understand this. If you think of this energy field that's connected to the human body when we're in the body. And picture that, I've talked about that before, kind of being in that shape of that torus, that we are pulling this constant stream of energy down from above us, and that part is coming down through our crown chakra. And we're also pulling it up from the earth, which is coming in through our root chakra. So that energy that's coming, we can say from earth and sky, then comes and it meets in our heart, okay? And there is this whole passage where where we send that energy out from our heart into our life. Well, after death, an earthbound spirit has no way to take in their own energy. So when they come into contact with you, guess what they're doing, They're taking your energy, and their presence can deplete the energy in any area they go into. So after I found that out, I wondered, hmm, I wonder if that's why lights flicker when we often associate electrical disturbances with earthbound spirits, like phones ringing or lights flickering, you know, because there's an energy draw there that's going on. So another thing that is typical is that the room that an earthbound spirit is in can feel really chilly. Or if you've ever walked into, let's say, a space that you felt like this cool breeze that you just walked through, you may want to check that out if you just walk through an earthbound spirit. So when an earthbound spirit attaches to the energy field, instead of it just hanging out in a space, because they also do that, if they're really attached to a particular location, they will stay in that location. But if it attaches to a living person, then this attachment begins to drain the energy of the host, no different than draining a battery. So when an earthbound spirit attaches to a family member or a friend because of the deep bond of love that's between them, I have to say on their behalf that they have no idea that this connection is damaging to both parties. And a lot of times, if they're really resistant to cross over, and I say that to them, I said, do you realize that your very presence, staying connected with whoever it is, is really draining their energy? When they find that out, they're a little bit shocked, and that's the last thing they want to do, is cause a problem. Okay, I'm going to give you some other symptoms. Following the death of a close loved one, a client may suddenly have severe emotional problems beyond the normal grief responses. So if you've lost someone and you're noticing that for yourself, that you're having emotional problems, think about that, check into that, you know, and just kind of ask, is this just me? Is this all mine? Whatever the earthbound spirit is feeling, meaning while it's earthbound, so that might range from anger to confusion, that would be a big one, to feeling really isolated or frustrated, like, why can't you hear me? Or why aren't you aware of me? You just keep crying and I'm right here. You know, so that, whatever those feelings are, or whatever the feelings were right prior to death, those feelings are likely to get imprinted into the client or into you or into a person who is picking this up. So other common feelings that clients report are along that emotional turmoil is depression. That's a big one. Another thing is hopelessness. There could be fear responses or unexplained phobias. You may remember my guest on show seven was Nikki, 
where Nikki did not have a fear of flying until it just seemed like it came out of the blue. But the trigger for that was she was then pregnant with her twins, and those twins were involved in that same plane crash that she went through in another lifetime. So that unexplained phobia is really probably an indicator. That's when, in her case, it was Nicholas that was the past life aspect of herself, when he probably really connected and clicked into her field. She began to feel it all. So quite often, I hear my clients say, when they have an earthbound spirit, and again, they don't know it yet, but they start saying when I'm asking them, okay, what's going on with you? One of the things I hear over and over and over again is, I feel stuck. I just feel stuck. Something's wrong. I don't feel like myself. And that stuck thing is a big indicator. So pay attention to the thoughts that you might be having or that you hear other people having. And especially if it's happening to you, pay attention to the thoughts that don't feel like you. You know, sometimes those thoughts, when you have an earthbound spirit, start pulling you toward thoughts of suicide. And in this case I'm talking about, it's not just if the earthbound spirit committed suicide, although that would be a really big one to watch. Again, Nikki shared a story of her own self going through that when her friend committed suicide. She went right into those same thoughts. And that is more common than not. When you've lost a loved one, you start feeling, what's the use? I just want to go with them. I want to be on the other side. I don't even want to be here anymore. So pay attention to that. When an attachment is present, your ability to function may also take a sharp downward turn. You just can feel like I just am not quite here. I feel discombobulated. You could also have strange aches and pains or physical ailments that start up, like a weak area. I just met with a client today who has asthma, but she said it's very manageable and it's not like it's all the time. But she noticed that the asthma has been much worse in these last three months. And it just so happened she had an earthbound spirit who was an eight-year-old boy who died from a whole, we could say asthma, but it was a whole lung condition. So it would certainly exacerbate her own condition where this is a weak area in her own body. And that is the thing that I've noticed for myself. Wherever I've got a natural weakness in my own body, that will be the place that I will feel it. I'll pick up. In other words, I'll feel a pain. So for me, that's the neck because I've been in car accidents over my life. So I've got a natural weakness there. So when I feel an earthbound attachment, it's I start feeling literally a pain in my neck. The other thing that is my kind of tell is I start feeling this headache that goes into a vice grip headache. Okay, if it doesn't, you know, get handled or I don't start making the connection. So For everybody, it's a little different, and it would be where your weakness is in your body. But I think headaches are kind of common, so pay attention to that, especially if you're not prone to headaches very often and a doozy comes on. So how do we pick up earthbound spirits? Well, the majority of my clients, again, had no idea that they did, no concept that they had somebody attached to them. Yet, when this was established and how it was established, because most of us walking around wouldn't qualify as being mediums who hear them or see them, although many of you out there listening are, and many of you have that gift that you can pick that up right away. You can see them. You can hear them. You know, but if you can't do that, then dousing with dousing rods is something that I use, that I douse my clients' entire uh, four sides, so front, back, right, and left side, I am measuring to see where they're carrying their auric field. And it always shows up in the back. 
It's as if the earthbound spirit, you know, runs around to the back and hides, or at least that's the way it shows up in the field, because their back will be completely collapsed, where the other sides will be a normal radius, you know, normal for them, because everybody's different. Or you can just use muscle checking, and there's all different ways you can do self-muscle checking as well as muscle check someone else. So these are good things to just explore with yourself to get a handle on, okay, do I even think I've got something? So I'm going to go into this a lot more, and I'm going to talk about those different relationships that we might have to an earthbound spirit. But first, we're going to take another short break. Stay with me. You're listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Toby Evans. I'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. And we're back. You are listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Toby Evans. And before the break, I was talking to you about what connection my clients or anybody would have to an earthbound spirit. So the big main one is it's somebody that you know or somebody you're related to. So that means it's a family member or it's a close friend. And that could be in any capacity. It's somebody you know. I've even heard in some cases it's um, more of a distant relative, but they came and attached to you because you happened to be the one that was the most open in the family or they could get them the help that they needed. So I'm going to give you some examples with some of these as I give you the more or less the main category. And in this case, I had a 69-year-old woman who came to me for an Akashic Record reading. And the reasons that she came for the reading was, again, she felt so stuck. Okay, that was her main thing. She also told me she was very depressed. She was very tired. She knew that she was past retirement, but she couldn't make a move to get out of the job or to put more into the job. And she said, you know, I don't have any joy in my life, but I also don't have any energy to leave because it's unknown. So as we began to explore, well, what's going on? You know, what's happening in your life? She told me that her husband died eight years earlier and that he had had a heart transplant. So he was sick for 11 years, you know, of those, never mind the eight years earlier that he had died. So during those 11 years, she was his constant caretaker. 
And at the very end, when they put him into hospice, they had to put him into a particular care facility to put into hospice. And when all of that was getting set up, she was just exhausted. She said she got him moved over to the place and got him settled in. And she knew that she had to go home and just sleep, even though she felt really guilty about that. And she felt guilty because she said, I could feel him looking for me and waiting for me and wanting me to be there. And she said, but I just, I couldn't do it. I had to sleep. So she went back home. She slept the night. She got up the next morning, you know, and you're probably thinking what I did. Oh, no. And did he die during the middle of the night? And that's not what happened. She said she gets there. He was overjoyed to see her so glad. And she apologized and, you know, I was able to talk with him and calm him down. And he died later that day. So I'm thinking, so what's the problem? And she said, I have so much guilt over that. I have so much guilt. I just can't let this go that I wasn't there for him during that 24 hour little stint. It was probably less than 24 hours. So we did a tapping session. Tapping is stands is short for EFT, emotional freedom technique. And it means you're tapping on the ends of the meridians where there was an energy disruption that was going on, where she was so caught in this guilt thing, she could not forgive herself at all. And of course, when we checked into it, her husband was still there even though he died eight years earlier. Not only was her husband there, but the husband's mother was there, which also made me do some investigation. And I realized the mother, when she died, she attached to her son. And that's when all of his troubles began, okay, that she couldn't let go. And it's kind of that perpetuating thing that we see over and over again. Usually if there's one earthbound spirit, there's others, So she was able to go through this whole thing with the tapping of forgiving herself and realizing that some of that guilt that she was carrying was his guilt in being such a burden for her over all of this time. Well, by the time that woman left, she looked like a different person, you know, just because she was lighter. She wasn't carrying that weight anymore. And I would venture to guess either she went back to the job wholeheartedly, or she just got out of it completely and decided to enjoy her retirement. So another relationship is sometimes you have an earthbound spirit who's related to you, but you don't know them at all. And this was the case with a young woman who came to me in her early 20s. And this person was so incredibly sensitive. Okay, she was an empath, but she was also a medium. She could see things. She could hear things. She could pick things up. And she'd been able to do it her whole life since she was a little girl. And it was very um, trying for her because she said she wouldn't even want to crawl on the floor when she was a baby because she could see things on the floor and it was freaking her out. But the worst thing for her was going to bed at night in her bedroom because she could always see this dark figure in the room. She didn't like the dark figure. She wanted nothing to do with this. And she would cry and scream and tell her mom. And it wasn't until she got older that she herself figured out this dark figure was her grandmother. She had never met her grandmother. It was her maternal grandmother. She had never met her. And yet she had heard the story many times that on the day that her mother found out that she was pregnant with her was the day that this maternal grandmother died. So she had gone to many psychics and was saying, I know my grandmother's in my room. She would also be saying this to her mother. And her mother, you know, was kind of saying, well, it can't be my mother because why do you keep feeling like it's so negative? You know, it wouldn't be a negative thing if it was my mother. And when she went to the psychics and was saying, you know, what is the deal? I feel like I'm under attack. This dark figure is in the room. The psychics went along with, you know, kind of that same thing saying, yeah, it is your grandmother and she is not trying to attack you. Actually, she's trying to protect you. So when we decided to investigate this and said, what's going on with this? Why is she picking it up in the first place? 
First of all, we went into her grandmother's background and found out that this woman was a little girl in the Ukraine during the World War when Germany came in and took over. And they hid her and her brother up in the attic, and they were peeking out the windows of that attic, watching the whole rest of the family being lined up in the street and slaughtered. They saw it all. And when they came in, the Germans came into the building, they found them in the attic, and instead of killing them, they took the kids and they put them to work. Well, her as a little girl went to work in a candy factory, and she said it's the only way she survived was eating candy, you know, but she had a very difficult life, and she ended up meeting an American soldier who she got pregnant, and he shipped her off to his mother back in one of the southern states. And the mother hated her. She didn't speak a word of English. So this little girl that grew up into this woman lived a very alone, isolated life. She didn't stay with the man. She was thrown out after a while and was here in America in a strange land trying to make it on her own. So imagine that kind of turmoil as your background. And now on the day that she finds out that that daughter is pregnant with her grandchild is the day that she dies. She would see that immediately as soon as she's out of the body. And she would also, her first thought would be that family loyalty. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to protect her. But in her effort to protect her, I think that she was so surrounded by a lot of dark entities who were playing on all of that persecution, that fear, that isolation, that the little girl perceived her grandmother as a very dark figure and was scared of all of this stuff. She didn't want anything to do with her. And it wasn't really resolved until we did the crossing over of her grandmother, but it really required the granddaughter being able to say, I forgive you, Grandma, and please forgive me that I didn't understand this. I didn't understand that you were really here for my good. And part of that convincing her to leave was also saying to her, the way that you can protect her best is to cross over. And once you cross over, you have the full understanding of what this lifetime was about. All the ways that you are not in that know right now, you will have that connection with your higher self. And then you truly can be a guardian angel to her in a way that you are not able to be while you're trying to do it in this isolated state, battling these darker energies. Okay, another form that uh, the earthbound spirits take or another relationship, I should say, that we would have to them, is it somebody we don't have a clue who they are. So I'll call them hitchhikers, okay? And hitchhikers come into our field in lots of different ways. They come in a lot through people who are using drugs or alcohol. Think about a person who loses consciousness under the influence of one of those. They are an open target, you know, to bringing in earthbound spirits, and especially those who would want to hang out in a place where there's lots of that going on. Okay, they're just standing in line going, I need a fix. Because even though they're out of a body, they if they had a drug uh, addiction or an alcohol addiction or any other kind of addiction, it could be a sex addiction, it could be a gambling addiction, then they're going to want that same fix. And the only way they're going to get it is being attached to somebody in the body who's going through those same kind of ups and downs. So the earthbound spirit craving that substance can enter the field and what it does to the living human host, it increases their cravings. They're going to feel like, you know, I used to be able to drink anytime I wanted to and never had a problem, but now I have this craving and I really am turning into this alcoholic, you know? So that is because of the influence of the attachment to your field. Another way hitchhikers can come in is under anesthesia during surgery. So when we go through surgery and that anesthetic 
process that happens, it's like it opens a psychic gate and it's like leaving the front door of your house wide open. So hospitals are hot spots for spirits that are looking for a friend to attach to because so many people die in the hospital. So a lot of times they're just kind of lifting up out of their body, going over to another person who's in there for another surgery, finding something that is attractive or a match for them and moving out the door with them. I've often heard that when you have an organ transplant, that recipient of that, sometimes, you know, you've all heard stories that all of a sudden you've got a craving for hamburgers and you've never liked hamburgers before. You know, that is true. And I would also check out, is it because there's an earth, earthbound spirit attached to that? So we're going to talk about unresolved emotional issues that might open you up for a hitchhiker. But first, we're going to take this short break, and I'll be right back with you. You're listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Toby Evans. I'll be right back. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. And we're back. You're listening to Dead But Not Gone here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Toby Evans, your host, and I'm talking about unresolved emotional issues because they can leave an opening in your emotional body. And earthbound spirits who have a similar emotional wound can use this as a portal to connect with you. So in other words, if you've got really bad, poor self-esteem, a poor self-concept, you can connect easily with someone who sees that same kind of thing in you because there's a vibrational match in them. So that's something to watch for when you pick up hitchhikers, and, and it is something that kind of shows up. Another common but most overlooked connection that a client has to an earthbound spirit is one that I've talked a lot about, and I'm going to continue to talk about this one, so I won't give you examples tonight, but that is when it's an aspect of ourselves from a past life. So that's a really big one, and many, many clients are coming to me that have that. One woman in particular who I did a recent LBL, meaning the life between lives, she found that there was five to six 
different male lifetimes, and remember, she's a female in this lifetime, where all of those males were stuck, and most of them were in kind of a soldier kind of capacity, a soldier lifetime, all throughout different, you know, aspects of what we think history. And they were still on their post. They were still going through the motions, you know, being of service, acting like that. They couldn't get out of that loop. So she acted as a magnet, really pulling all of those metal filings to her, you know, and I I think in in her case, I was thinking it's almost like splinters that are festering underneath the surface of your skin that finally work themselves up to that top where they get our attention and then you can pull them. You know, in this case, we pulled them across. So what to do if you suspect that you've got an earthbound spirit attached to you? How can you help? Well, the first thing is check your own attitude about this. You know, fear isn't going to help because that's the knee jerk reaction. Oh no, I have an earthbound spirit. You know, instead move into a place of compassion, move into a place of getting yourself centered, whether that means you do something like that heart massage where you just rub your hand over your heart back and forth saying, I accept myself just as I am, even though I have this attachment. You can do the hookup, which is that finger to your third eye, another one in your navel. You can thump on the thymus and in on those K27 that's right below the collarbone. Okay, so stay out of fear, though. Then set up an octahedron of light in your own mind. And what's an octahedron of light look like again? Picture a four-sided pyramid. Have it be gold. Imagine it in the room you're in. Have it come all the way down to the floor. And then just think, well, I'm making a mirror reflection of another one going right below it, upside down, so the two bases are connected, so it looks like a diamond if you're drawing it flat, two-dimensionally. Picture that you are standing in the middle of that octahedron or if you are suspecting somebody has an earthbound spirit and you're thinking it is not appropriate for me to say this to them, I don't want to bring any attention to this, then just create it in your mind. Create an octahedron around that person and call in help from the angels. And you don't have to remember what the angels' names are or who they are, but call in the archangels and say, I want one to stand in the center of each of those four sides. And if you don't remember anyone else, call for Archangel Michael to be at the top of the pyramid. So he will help direct the traffic. Okay, you're calling for Metatron and and Zadkiel to be below, Raphael, Gabriel, Ariel, and Uriel to be on the four sides, or you can ask anybody else that you feel more comfortable with. We're dealing with non-physical energies when we're dealing with earthbound spirits, so we need intelligence and aid from non-physical helpers, and that means your angels or your spirit guides or your personal guardian team, or make sure you include the higher self of the earthbound spirit themselves. So that's where I really like to trace a labyrinth with the intent to help them release anything blocking those chakras because I have my particular labyrinth aligned to the chakras. But if you're not using a labyrinth, you can just have that be your intent. I'm calling in the higher self. And if you're using a labyrinth, have it set up in your mind. By the time I get to the center, the higher self aspect is going to be there for them. I visualize that higher self aspect as two beings of light, male and female, because they are representing the two polarities that we are when we are in earth incarnations. We're either in the male polarity or the female polarity, but we have both polarities within us, no matter which sex we are. So you're calling in those two beings of light and feel them or envision it, imagine it, that you're placing the male forming that upward pyramid 
pyramid. In other words, he's going to go from a light being morphing into an upward pyramid of light that goes around the, the soul. And then picture a downward pyramid of light intersecting that going down below. So I'm not talking about an octahedron looking shape. It is called a star tetrahedron, or it's called the Merkaba, but it looks like a star of David if you were going to draw that in a flat way. So that becomes the portal or the light ship that they just move all the way up and out. So portals can be made in lots of different ways. It can be any kind of sacred geometry like the octahedron, like the labyrinth, like my other shape I have on my land that I call a nine petal vesica, or it can be a fire ceremony or a staircase going up of light or a rainbow or a bridge. Don't let your imagination stop you here. Let it run wild and create something that feels good to you. So that's our show for today. I hope that's given you a place at least to start and become more comfortable with all of this. I want to remind you that if you've got comments you want to share or questions you'd like to address on upcoming shows, then leave those questions for me at Dead But Not Gone on BBM Global Network, or you can visit my Facebook page or email me, toby at sagebrushexchange.com. Or if you're involved in helping any Earthbound Spirits crossover, I'd love to talk with you and see if you'd like to come on the show. I welcome hearing from any of you. Join me next week when I'm going to be interviewing a woman who discovered that her 20-year reoccurring dream was, re, was originating from an earthbound aspect of herself. She's got a really compelling story. You aren't going to want to miss this. Remember that we were made for these times, but we have to be dead on to step out of our fear and into the highest vibration in order to wake up and do our part. We are all in this together, here to heal, reveal, and uplift the earth. Freeing those who are dead but not gone is ultimately freeing ourselves. Contrary to what the lower matrix wants us to believe, we are all one. From BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, you've been listening to Dead But Not Gone. I'm your host, Toby Evans. Step up to wake up. Aho. You've been listening to Dead But Not Gone with your host, Toby Evans. Listen every week as Toby will explore and discover how your life is affected from beyond the here and now on the next episode of Dead But Not Gone. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company